in the usual fashion if you watch my other guides. Hello. Well, I hope everyone is doing alright. Here we are again with a new one. Now this is a personal favorite of mine. The squad leader's guide to the galaxy and don't forget to bring a towel. I wanted to do this one for a while now but I was struggling with where to start, what to explain without making this an hour long guide. I tried to condense it down to a practical guide with enough depth to make you an effective squad leader. So let's get right into it because there's so much to tell and so much to explain. Before you think about playing squad leader in Hell Let Loose, there are a few mandatory things that you need to know or do before jumping into the squad leader role. The squad leaders in Hell Let Loose are the backbone, eyes and ears of the commander and your team. Make sure you have a good understanding of how Hell Let Loose works on a basic level. If not, I highly suggest you watch some of my other guides. Also, if you're new to the game, there are roles better suited for you to learn the game since this game has a really high learning curve. This is not to disencourage you from playing squad leader, but playing squad leader effectively requires you to have a good understanding of the ever so changing battlefield. The second thing that is mandatory in my opinion is to have a working microphone. Even if you're shy or a bit scared to talk to fellow strangers on the internet, I can understand that, but as a squad leader you don't have to tell complete stories, but you do have to relay and communicate information to your squad and the other players in the chain of command. This is crucial and I can't emphasize it enough. Competent and communicating squad leaders will win you games. I won't go over the loadouts in details, but I feel everyone can figure that out for themselves. And the only change or the most important change is that you get a shiny pocket watch which allows you to place outposts and garrisons. The outpost is a spawn point where your squad can spawn on and a garrison is a spawn point for your whole team. Also, you get an extra communication channel to communicate with other squad leaders than the commander. This can be accessed with the default key binding X. You also get a set of binoculars, only me personally I tend to use them on rare occasions for checking if that's a tank in the distance or checking if your fellow squad mates are upholding the army hygiene regulations. Now before we go over some more practical things about where to place garrisons, uh, where to place outposts, it is important to understand the role. Playing squad leader is all about leading your squad and setting them up for success. It's not your role to be the best shooter or have the best KDA on your team, it is all about giving your squad the best chance to execute their role. You will want to be constantly reading the map and making decisions based off that. Where will your squad attack or defend? Where do you need map control? Is the garrison network still good or do you as a squad leader need to place new garrisons? All kinds of questions you should be asking yourself whilst playing squad leader. To be an efficient squad leader it's all about leadership, communication and map awareness. Now I'm not mentioning garrisons in specific, I will go over that when we get to map awareness. A part of being an effective squad leader is your ability to lead your squad and set them up for success. Remember, you are playing this role for the greater good, or in other words, the team. Now with leadership I don't mean you need to micromanage your squad, because an AT player in your squad knows how to blow up tanks and so on. But give them orders or objectives and make them part of the bigger picture. For leading your squad you can give them orders with the markers that are available to you and also communicate the orders via the squad chat. You can make this as complicated as you want. I usually tend to keep it general and tell my squad what we are clearing out and why it is important to clear that out. How they are getting there is up to themselves. Another thing as a squad leader and that is also tied in with leadership is to ask your squad to take up certain roles. If you don't see any notes up, ask one of your squad mates to pick up engineer and hammer some notes, while you get them the means to provide those notes. Do you need a support player to build a garrison? Ask one of your squad mates to quickly swap to support and drop your supplies. But more on that later. Sometimes you see squad mates wandering off and going solo. You might need to call them out and lead them towards the objective you are trying to take. On a few occasions I do micromanage my squad and that is usually when it comes down to taking down key buildings or getting rid of tanks on the map. Let's say you are trying to cap St. Mary Glees, 
It can always safely assume there are players inside the church and, well, the fastest way to get rid of them is to stick a satchel on the church. Once my squad is in a good position, close to the church, I will get someone to try and stick a satchel on the church. Always think ahead when leading your squad and all in all everyone has different styles of leadership but find something that suits you. As I mentioned, I tend to lead my squad through usage of different markers, communicating them via squad chat and so on. You can place markers by right clicking when you have the map open or via the middle mouse button to access the marker wheel or radius wheel or whatever you want to call it. I prefer to use a combination of both, but in most occasions I use the marker wheel. Once you get used to it, you can use it on the fly and practice makes perfect. Now, you're not bound to one marker on the map, you can use multiple markers at any given time and after a few minutes these mar markers will automatically disappear. Also, update your markers regularly to provide your other squad leaders and your squad with the best information you can give them. What I tend to do in competitive and normal games is use multiple markers at any given time. For example, I can use the move marker to give a general direction or indicate where we are going or where the support can drop their supplies. The attack marker to let my squad know where an enemy garrison or tank is, so they can get a satchel or something else on it. And I use the observe marker a lot to make my fellow squad mates aware of a certain enemy player or garrison or be on the lookout in a certain direction. To find out which markers are visible to your squad or fellow officers, have a look around the marker radius wheel Inside the circle, on the bottom, it will tell you who can see them. So, to recap, or to summarize, you can feed a lot of important information to your squad via markers. You just have to communicate the meaning behind them. While we are on the topic of communication, this is another vital part when it comes to playing squad leader. To be an effective squad leader, you will need to communicate and relay information to your squad and other officers or the commander. Now, you don't need to tell complete stories, simple orders can do the job and it's preferred. At the start of a game, there are multiple ways to break the so-called ice and start the communication between you and your squad. You can crack a joke, use humor, or what I tend to do in public games is to do a quick mic check to see who is willing to communicate in your squad. Lead by example and start communicating in your squad. We all had those games where there's no communication at all. Well, you can break this by just talking yourself. In most of the cases, other players will help you out or feel comfortable enough to start speaking up. As a squad leader, you're getting information from all different sides. You got your squad chat, you got your proximity chat, you got officer chat, and this can be absolutely hectic at times. And yeah, you will not hear everything. So don't be afraid to ask again if you miss something. Especially in competitive, it is crazy on the amount of information you are getting left and right. You simply just can't follow everything, so you will have to process this information in your own way. Especially when starting out as a new squad leader, yeah, it's much, it's a lot to process. The best practice is, yeah, play. Play a lot and you will get used to it and it will get easier over time. When it comes down to commander or officer chat, keep it simple. Just keep it short and precise. A simple P4 on Baker tank mark will do. Or enemy supply drop on Baker garrison mark, also fine. Giving clear but short instructions and communicating precise information will help immensely towards winning the game and keep officer chat clear. Map awareness is so important as a squad leader. When playing Hell Let Loose, it's not about point control. Sure, holding three points will win you the game in the end, but Hell Let Loose is all about map control. And as a squad leader, you play a really important part to achieve map control. If you want to be an effective or play effective as a squad leader, you will need to have great map awareness and understand how the game is playing out. Hell, you might even need to predict where to go next or what to take to get a step ahead of the enemy. On a basic level, you always should be asking yourself, does my squad need to attack or defend? And this can be simply answered by looking at the map and see what is going on on the map. You see you're losing the point and everyone that was on the point is wiped out. Yes, you need to defend. 
If you see there are already two or three squats in or around the point, you can assume you can be a bit more aggressive yeah, towards the next point, but here. communicate and discuss that with your other squad Which leaders. Price. When it comes to defending, you don't want to be sitting on the hard cap. What you will want to do is take map control yeah, yeah. around the point and sniff out where the spawn points are. Clearing out enemy garrisons and outposts will significantly hamper their ability to attack. Also, if you're defending and in trouble, try to signal this early so other squads can help you. Do not be afraid to ask for help from your fellow squad leaders. Now, this is a very basic level of making decisions as a squad leader. And when it comes to map awareness, just for the sake of the length of this video, I will release another one in the future with more advanced insights and more in-depth insights into map awareness and what scenarios you might be facing. Just keep in mind it's a cat and mouse game that is changing by the second. The map is the most important tool in your kit as a squad leader. Look at it often, make informed decisions based on the information the map is giving you. Map control and control over key areas will win you games. Over to outposts and garrisons. The basics, when it comes down to placing, are quite simple, but how to use them effectively is a bit more complex. Outposts will give you a spawn point for your squad and has a reduced spawn timer in comparison to a garrison. The rule of thumb is usually having an outpost is better than no outpost. Sometimes your outpost isn't in the ideal spot or you find yourself in a spot that isn't ideal. Well, just place down your outpost and work from there. Because at least you will have a spawn point in that area or near your objective. Another tip I can give you when it comes to outpost is always move it up with your squad and don't be afraid to move it a few meters back or forward to keep your outpost secure. You can also pick up your outpost to reset the cooldown timer and place it somewhere else. It is a risky move to do, but in some cases it is worth doing that. Now garrisons in the blue zone will cost you 50 supplies and a red zone garrison will cost you 100 supplies. In competitive and public games, you always want the support role to be open and up for grabs. This will allow you to work around the cooldown that is on the supply box and get supplies in when needed. When I see a garrison that needs to be replaced on the map, I will just ask the next person who dies to grab the support role and drop me the supplies I need to get the garrison up. Or if you need a hundred supplies for a redstone garrison, you can ask someone to grab supplies, drop them, redeploy and then the next player can go support to get the other 50 in. For more info on best practices like where to place a garrison or what to do with your outpost, I highly recommend you watch the squad leader tips and tricks video I released earlier. When it comes down to the most effective squad composition, well, it all depends what role you're executing on the map or what your goal is. You need to be flexible with that and so does your squad. As I mentioned, I always leave the support role open to work around the cooldown and the roles that I absolutely want in my squad is AT and players that have access to level 9 assault or level 3 engineer, since that will give you extra satchels to work with. But you can rotate this in and out and however you see fit. For the rest I just leave it up to what role people are comfortable with. On a side note though, the MG role is sometimes undervalued and a well placed MG can give you the firing power to push up or defend. All in all, as a squad leader, there is a lot you need to do and process. Yes, it can be a hectic role, but a high rewarding role. Once you have a basic understanding of the game, don't be afraid to try out squad leading. And as is with everything, the more you play, the better you will get. And playing squad leader will also make you better in other roles as well. As I mentioned before, I highly recommend the squad leader tips and tricks video which I released earlier. Amongst other things in that video I'm going over back best practices when it comes to placing garrisons, how the capping system works and so on. For now leave a comment with your thoughts and ideas or any feedback you may have for me. Thank you for watching and I hope this will help you in becoming a good and efficient squad leader.